Good morning, it's me, it's Bettler here, uh, coming at you live uh, on, a, on a Monday mor morning, M Monday, 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 uh, Monster uh, Bettler Truck Rally, we're gonna, what am I gonna, <laughs> you guys, we're doing some, uh, we're doing some tips and tricks, just a couple little tips and tricks, just some throws at you, gonna do, I'm gonna throw them at you, and I'm gonna do it right now. So let's kick it off. Uh, hey, you might have a slow computer, right? Yes, my computer is very slow. My computer is slower than a snail <gasps> going uphill. Really? Well, I've got just a, uh, just the trick for you here. Just the little uh, trick coming at you. Go to view and then go to preview mode. Ever heard of this thing? It's magic, sort of. <laughs> You, um, you have options here. And I think I may have talked about this one time before, but I'm making it a point again in these tips and tricks. If your computer is slow, put it to fast. If, clearly, if your computer is fast, put it to full. Unless you want it on fast. Here's the difference, here's the difference. It doesn't smooth every pixel. So, uh, I'm recording this, I hope, on high resolution. See, I got this 1600, 900 going on good. So, you might be able to see this. Check this circle out. Ready? So, right now, we are on fast mode. Look at those jagged edges. If I take a screenshot, and then I paste that screenshot, and I zoom in, oh man, look at how uh, jagged it is. Uh, Willikers. But, you take the same uh, circle, and you view it in full mode, then, oh, oh then, look at how smooth it becomes. And I mean blurry, but from far away, smooth like a alligator's tail's underside. Whew. So that's what the view mode and fast mode does, and it's really good for when you start to have complex scenes with like a, 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 a thousand things going on, you know, because otherwise your flash might start to crash, and you well you don't want that. No, no one wants that. So the fast mode is what can save you from uh, having your flash uh, crash and be awful at displaying things. You know, if you have less than two megabytes of RAM or less than one, I mean less than two or one gigabytes of RAM, I might recommend doing that fast mode. You know, something like this might start to cause some, uh, some real problems for displaying so many vectors after, you know, like even wowzers it that's crazy that's the most intense shape tune i've ever seen it look at this it goes in and makes all these little you know who even knows what's happening really i i don't that is insane oh look and my mouse is lagging i think flash might just take a little dive right now you know why it's because i'm not on fast mode mm. classic mistake andrew classic mistake Let's go into that uh, task manager and uh, let's end this now and launch Flash again. What a tips and tricks tutorial it is. It's so relevant to what I'm talking about. Next tip, stream audio. S -s -s stream audio. You've got yourself some music. Oh. Now, this isn't an audio tutorial and I'm not doing an audio tutorial for probably a couple weeks because uh, I don't even want to dive into it yet, but I just want to get this out of the way now. So we can make it uh, very clear. We drop in some Betty Grable. It's an MP3, so I think Flash might be able to handle it. Betty Grable, you know. Oh, 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 oh. Check it out. Check. Mm, 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 mm. See what I'm talking about? See, it's music. Bam! Slamming onto that stage. Where does it go next? Into our timeline. Well, we see it up here, right? We see it up here. We're looking at it. And normally, it might be like this. You know? We're like, oh, I want to listen to just this part of the song. Oh, 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 I don't know what's happening. Well, you, my friend, need to put it on stream. You select either one frame or all the frames or just two frames or anywhere in between of your sound bit. And 
you have it selected and or just one and then you go to your properties wherever it is and then you put the event the effect type the the sync type the synchronization type to stream stop is for something different and start is for something different you need event sometimes sometimes especially when making games when you just have one little symbol that's like your sound symbol but for stream animation is where it's at okay you can use event in animations too and, and I think sometimes you have to for really long things but otherwise check it out scrubbing powers because it's streaming each bit of audio to each frame just like that good going good going Okay, let's uh let's uh get rid of that little piece of sound bite right there. Let's get rid of it. Next trick or tip: tween curve transfers. Ooh, I already talked about this in my typography tutorial. But for one quick little recap, and I swear I I will be speedy. If you have a movie clip and it's right here, and for a chance you didn't see my uh uh my tutorial on typography, then this will be so good just so good I copied it I got it copied I got it I always make sure to copy if you're about to do some drastic stuff and you don't have anything you need to have in your pasteboard in your pasteboard just do a little copy action just just do just make a little copy stance action and then you'll be fine and dandy dealt because then you can paste it if anything goes ruckus because things always go ruckus when you're working with flash it just crashed on me you all saw it it was, it was a crash apocalypse don't do complex shape chains like I, like I was doing. That's how you, 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 cra you crash it. So this top one, this uh, black one. Oh, so this top one, this uh, black one right here. Go into your uh, properties, and then you've selected your tween, one or any frames, except for this one. This one won't do anything because the tween is all over it until the last one. The last one is a, is a keyframe. Just don't worry about it. Click anywhere in here. You grab this. You You tell it, I want you to start real slow. I want you to speed up in the middle, right here, and then slow down at the end. And now, he's, he's going to listen to you. He's going to do a little listen action. I mean, it's obnoxiously fast. In fact, it goes backwards at some point. <laughs> it's too intense. <laughs> let's, let's make it a little bit less intense. Here we go. That's a good tween. Wow, I should save that one. Make that like a, a, a template team, tween. That's really good. Oh, I want to use that again, but on this pink one. So let me just, let me just go in there. Let me just try to recreate it. You know, just let me recreate it. But I'm just going to make my do bit my best here. Let me just... Um, 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 um. Oh, no, they're a little bit different. What do I do? Well, select them. Okay? Make sure that the one you want to copy from is on top. Make sure the one you want to copy to is underneath it. It can be a layer lower, but you can't do this then. It's really easy if it's right underneath, because then you can do this. If it was, because then you can do this. Because if it was like this, you could go like that, and then hold control, and then do that. That'll do the trick. Or you can just have it be in the right spot. Sometimes, if you animated it like this, where the pink one was on top, you might need for a second to move the black one on top just to copy your tween, and then move it back underneath so that you could um, have it the, the right ordering system that you wanted. Yada, yada, yada. Mip, mam, or jammer, jammer. So let's, let's say it was like this. You know, let's... Do some of that action. I, I control left clicked both frames to get it like that. Now, this easing value, it's got two different ones on it, but it picks the hierarchy uh, layer wise to transfer. So it's going to be copying the higher up to the lower down when you edit. Now, here, you're editing the top one, but at the same time, you are transferring to the lower one. So if you just hit OK, it'll immediately transfer this pink one to be the exact same tween as the lower one and if I undo to before I did it now they're different right if I had um, done it like this to where I change something I'm still editing the top one but I'm also transferring it to the lower one so it's like an immediate multi tween editing system <laughs> What's next? F6 infinite. <laughs> Made myself some little notes. So, I talked about this, I believe, but here's what you want to do. 
you have got a thing. You've got a thing. You got your pink ball. And this really tripped me up and made me angry when I started animating because I couldn't understand why the timeline did the stupid things that it consistently does very, very well. If you have a ball on a frame block, these are what I call frame blocks. This is a frame right there. This is a frame block right here because it has a little empty rectangle to notify the end of the block. And if you try and animate on one of these, like if you don't, it, it, there's two ways that you can like move a movie clip around. Well, there's three ways. Well, there's five ways. But say here's way number one. You just don't have any frames out there and you keep hitting your F6 or make new frame button as you move it, la la la. I was holding alt, that's why it duplicated. But that's one way. You know? Oh. So you can just make new frames for each new frame. Or you can not do that, and you can already have a frame block of how much you think you might need, and you start doing this, right? You start going, mm, 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 mm. And then you're like, hmm, let me just uh, click over here a little bit. And then you go back to work on it. And you're like, okay, let me just make a new frame. Let me just, let me just make a new frame. Huh. Wait. Ooh. Ooh. What happened? <laughs> See, this was me for f four years. Four years, people. You, uh, I still do it. I, I, make, I make safeties now, but I'm still doing it. If you have a frame block, and you want to do that whole frame by frame thing where you hit F6 and move it a little bit, you can't select it in your workspace. It's not allowed, because then it thinks that you want all of it. It treats this as one big frame, and it thinks that that's what you want. You don't want that. So, you kind of have to fake it a little bit. Go up here, and grab the first frame, like by single clicking one, the first frame, then you can do your F6 action. Otherwise, what it's going to do is think, if you grab one of these, even if you don't even grab everything, it thinks you want to do it and make a billion frames of the thing you didn't even grab. So, just a little note. Click it right here. Don't click it right here if you have a frame block. Good. What's going on? Control plus Alt. Control plus space. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Control plus space. I'm doing it right now. See that? Just a little tool tip for you. You know, you got your basic hotkeys and the such other. But your zoom tool, the hotkey for that one, that's Z regularly. Also, if you're already doing this all the time, and you're already doing, um, you're on brush, you know, and you're going to control all the time, well, then what the heck, what? Why not, you know, why not just um, combine the two, you know, control and space, <gasps> and get a little magnifying glass on the fly, wherever you need it. And then if you're too far zoomed in, hold control and space and alt, <gasps> do a little zoom out action. I just found that one like a month or two ago, and I wrote it on my little tips and tricks uh, sticky note. I thought one day I'm going to talk about this, and now I have, uh, yeah, <laughs> here. Let's go on to the next one. Symbol. Zoom scale. Ah, oh, yes, yes, it is. Okay, so you got yourself a symbol, right? This, we'll call this uh, symbol red. Symbol red has been symbolized, and now it is in our library. It's called symbol one, but it's actually symbol red. Only you and me know it. And then over here, we're going to make symbol blue you know, for two. And then this will be symbol two. Symbol blue and symbol red are great. They are awesome. Now here's the thing. The instant you create them, you not only create an entire new timeline universe inside of them. Notice how uh, out here we have one layer, but inside symbol red, we have, well, we have, we have two layers here. And then inside of symbol blue, we have five layers. So you, you not only create a new timeline, but you create a new universe. <laughs> but you really do. Like, everything in here is different. We're inside right now. We're, we're in the dream. And now we're out of it. We've woken up. And then we're back down. 
and look at this we're gonna go another layer deep we fell asleep in the dream okay so if you want to understand what I mean let's go back to awake and scale up symbol red okay symbol red is huge now it's it's giant now before I explain what I mean let me just do a little example my monitor is 900 pixels up and down if I select this and I use my arrow keys to move it up or down it moves one pixel at a time so I would have to click if I if I had this in full screen mode if I had it at the very bottom I would need to do up arrow 900 times for it to get to the top because it moves by one pixel if I hold shift and then I use my arrow keys it moves by 10 pixels so I would need to do it 90 times I think I'm like fairly certain that that's correct so so bear that in mind let's go inside of symbol blue so now we're still at let's go to 100 percent we're at 100 percent zoom and let's make ourselves a little poly star that one looks good and I'll copy it up it's copied so this is poly star one I'll make a, an example of it in the real world back in scene one so here we go if I move this up ready it moves one pixel at a time now let's scale down symbol blue and let's go inside of symbol red and paste this oh wait a minute all I did was hit paste <gasps> It's a new universe. I pasted this shape inside of this symbol and it's this size. Why is that? Well, because symbol red knows how large it was when it was created many moons ago. It remembers what this was like. It was roughly this big. So now that it's scaled up, anything that you paste inside of it in relative terms will have to be scaled up as well. And also note, if I use my up arrow now inside of symbol red, whoa, wait a minute, wait, this is not right, this is not right. <laughs> oh, that's my rotation. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I'm doing it backwards, I'm doing it backwards. Here, it doesn't move very far. It's moving like less than one pixel, because out here, like this is moving a lot more. Inside of symbol blue, look at this, it's moving crazy amounts. If I use my shift up arrow, look how much it moves. That's a lot faster than it was outside. And it scales. So if I put this even down further, and I go inside. Ready? This is just my up arrow. Okay? This is gargantuan distances. Like that it's moving. For just an up arrow. It's more than one pixel. And for here, it's moving like half a pixel each time. Like I'm holding down the shift move one right now and it's clearly not moving 10 pixels at a time so just be in mind that each time you create a new you know symbol you create a new universe and it works for unproportionate scaling as well where like so this is really stretched right if we make a perfect circle out here and then copy it and paste it in here it's not a perfect circle anymore because it's under the transformations that the symbol has been applied okay done dealt let's talk about canceling a selection <gasps> I don't even know what I meant by this one canceling a oh that's right that's right so sometimes you have a bunch of stuff right and it's like I got it I got it. And then you start transforming it. Hmm. And then you go to rotate it, right? And you do this, like you are ready to rotate, but you go like this and you're like, oh, no. I worked really hard to select all these things, right? And I don't want to have to grab them again. You're like, because then that happens. You're like, let me just rotate. Oh, no. Oh, no. So. Let's say you accidentally make a selection box. Here's what you can do real fast. Here's what you can do. Make it little. And then let go. And you're free. Now you can rotate. See what I just did there? I missed my handle. Like I was trying to skew, but I went like that. Oh, no. Make it little. Make it like one pixel wide. Let go. And it won't count as a, as a selection. Done. That's how you cancel a selection. It's, it's helpful um 
for, I believe, if you're enveloping. I think. Hold on. I'm trying to get the right thing. Like, if you do that. Because when you envelop, there's no undoing. Like, once I do this, and then I do that, like, and then I select, if I hit Control Z, it doesn't go back to those handles that the envelop had. It just goes to a free transform select. And if I try and go to envelop while I'm at it, it doesn't remember that these were pushed. It, it resets it. So if you've got a really complex envelop uh, distortion going on, and you like the way it's looking, and then you accidentally reach for this handle, but you do this, if you're oh so careful, you can undo it by making your box little. Make your selection boxes tiny. I think the threshold is like two by two pixels. Oh, it's bigger than that. Maybe it's like, ooh, it's like five by five. Ah, see? But just make it little and you'll be safe. Done. Next. Control option. Oh, oh, this makes me so mad. I'm such a fool. I'm such a fly fool. I think I actually spoke about this not being possible in a tutorial a while ago about how if I'm on my brush tool, right? If I'm on brush and I hit control, then I get this little temporary selection tool. I wanted to be able to make points on a line by holding option and control at the same time. And I thought I wasn't able to, but apparently that's exactly what you can do. And I looked and I checked and you can do it in Flash 8 too. It's always been a thing. So if I'm on brush tool right now, see? But I'm actually holding control and option and I'm able to do this. If I was just holding control, no option, I would be able to do this, right? And then here it is with option, making points instead of editing lines. So there you go. And then if I let go of everything, I'm back to brush. Control, option, let go. Done. OK, what's next? We're wrapping up. This is a short video. Oh, oh boy. This angsts me. Here's your timeline, right? Here it is. So let's say we got something going on in here. Lots of things going on. Oodles of things. Jeez, that shouldn't be coming through your ears. What's up with this timeline? Well, there's frames and frame blocks all over. If you hold control, wait, what? Not that. If you hold um, there's some key. But look at this. If I if I select a frame, any frame, and I hover over it, my cursor changes to the move uh, keyframe cursor type. But that might happen all the time. So you know how sometimes you want to go in here and make your your, your layers real short like that. Oh, well, there's this button <laughs> that I had trouble finding, <laughs> but it's here called span based selection, and it'll make your cursor look like that all the time, and it'll select frame blocks as one whole thing, uh, r right like that. And this might be desirable. Um, I don't know when. I would never want it, but here's what it does. It uh. It, it treats your scrubber kind of like a a width controller. It's just a different way to edit the timeline. And if you have this and you don't want it, you might be freaking out. It lets you drag frame blocks anywhere you want them. Um, I've never I've never found it helpful, but it might be to you. Who knows? You know, I I sure don't. I'm trying to extend this thing, but it won't let me. And then you can like pick it up and do it like that. Apparently, I don't, I went and checked. It's been around since Flash 8. I just never ever knew about it or used it. It's called Span Based Selection, and it's it's kind of silly. And ugh. all you have to do to turn it off is tick that box. So you know about blurs, right? This is the last one, by the way. This is your last tip and trick for today's video. You know about blurs, 
you use them regularly for your effects and the what have you or you don't because you haven't learned effects yet you go make it a symbol go to your properties go to filters go to blur it's got to be a movie clip and then you blur whoop, 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 whoop. there's low and high quality right but say this was just a sh uh, fill okay here it is a fill 30 days of fill you go to edit no you go to modify shape wait wait, wait. hold on hold on one second um shoot is it selected oh okay okay modify shape once it's selected and soften fill edges are you ready for this put it at 10 pixels put it at five steps two steps no two pixels per step you're gonna expand ready what 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 has it done? Oh, oh my gosh. These are just lower alpha layers of the same color. Here's a 20%, here's a 40%, 60, 80. Oh my, oh my gosh. Let's do that again. Modify, shape, expand, fill. Let's go 50. Or no, that's not what I meant. Expand fill just does that. It just puts a larger fill on our name. But I'm talking about this soften fill edges. Let's put this at 50. And let's put this at 10. It looks pretty blurry from back here, right? But wait a minute. This is no movie clip. This is all native flash vectors. You can pull it whichever which way you want. Fills. Look at this stuff. It's some kind of magic. I I still don't understand that this has been around since 8. And probably MX. Who knows how long. But you can just make blurs in-house, in-thing, without it having to be a movie clip. So, say you've got like a uh, thing you want to have blurred, but you want it to be animated, and you don't want to... Here. It's not super applicable, but it's real cool. Like, oh my gosh. Rectangle primitives, the worst, the worst. They don't make any sense, they're useless. Uh, you, you do this, you slam some jam on it, uh, you do a little tween action, convert to classic, do uh, a bitty little start fast and slow, whew, as you call easing out. And then you go in, you make it frames, right? You make it frames, then you go in, you set your edit multiple frames button, you put it on all of them, you select all, you break apart, you go modify, shape, soften fill edges, put it like that. Look at that. You got a blurry thing that's native. It's native. It's it's freaking it's cut apartable. It's this stuff. Like, I mean, it's um it's that. You know, it's, it's, it's fills. No questions asked. That's not a mask. That's happening because I have gone in and frame by frame erased that from each shape. Like, these are edges. I don't know. It's just cool. Like, you wanted to do like something like that? And then it's just done. I don't know. You can do it. And then also, as you saw, you can um, you can expand fills like without using the uh, eye the eyedropper or without using the uh, paint bucket ink bottle. Like you've got yourself a lovely line that you drew, and you want it to be thicker, so you can just go shape, expand fill, make it by I don't know thirty. Wait, no, that wasn't supposed to happen. Hold on, hold on, modify shape, expand fill, make it by. Five. Modify shape. How about by ten now? Ooh, kind of wishy-washy. It doesn't work really well for thin, jaggedy lines. <laughs> but hey, thick, smooth lines. It loves it. Let's make this cap around. Smooth it off a little bit. Smoothen it. 
control it, turn it into go modify uh, shape convert lines to fills that I just did with my command and then you expand this thing by 50 it's gonna work. Okay. These were some tips and tricks by me. I'm sure in a month or two I'll remember some more things and I can talk to you about them too. I'll learn some things. Who knows? I don't. Good day to you then. Uh, have a happy or whatever day you watch. <laughs> Bye.